while homeowners who were wrongfully foreclosed on are about to get that big payout that they've been waiting for. A payout that is literally in the tens of dollars. In compensation for all of their struggles to fight the big banks and prove that they were not in fact delinquent on their payments, the majority of homeowners will be compensated just about $300. The Office of the Comptroller of the Currency announced that it reached a settlement for how to break up the fees after the regulators decided that the review was such a mess that it's time to call it quits. Here's how that money divides up. This chart shows a breakdown of how much money each family will be paid for their troubles. Of the 4.2 million people affected, nearly 2.4 million will receive less than $800. But even the way the OCC decided on these categories is up for debate. Now let's look where the money is actually coming from. 13 companies were involved in this case against wrongful foreclosures. They included Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Citibank, and HSBC, among others. In total, these banks were forced to pay a combined $3.6 billion in reparations. Now, to put that number into perspective for how much that puts these companies back financially, the estimated quarterly earnings revenue for uh, J.P. Morgan Chase alone is $25.94 billion. So here to break this story down, someone who has been following it closely, Alexis Goldstein. She's a former VP of Merrill Lynch and Deutsche Bank. And she's also a contributor to The Nation, where she wrote an article about this very issue. Alexis, thanks for joining me. Uh, there are people that are receiving this, this small amount of money. Is it, is it enough? No, it's absolutely not enough. I mean, you did a good breakdown of it. I think it's a slap in the face, right? So if you're someone, for example, who received what's called a loan modification, so that means the bank said, OK, we're going to work with you. We're going to lower your monthly payment and you were still foreclosed on, you get between $300 and $500 for your troubles and your tragedy. And that's about 60% of the people who will be receiving money for this. So it's just a paltry amount. And explain, put that, that kind of money into context. How much were these people actually out? Well, they're out, you know, they were foreclosed on, they lost their home. So it depends on the value of their home, but we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. You're talking strife, being made homeless, because of an error that a bank made, right? These are not people who didn't make their payments. Uh, there's another line in this report about people who were totally current on their payments. They made every single payment, they were not in default, and they were still foreclosed on. Those people will only get $5,000, in spite of the fact that they lost their home and they're not getting their home back as a part of the settlement. Absolutely, and I read that these uh, these estimates for how they were broken down actually doesn't talk about the emotional toll that was actually uh, put on these people when they had to move out without cause. Meanwhile, the consultants that the OCC actually hired to review this process, they were independent consultants. Now, they received a combined $2 billion for their efforts. That's right. So, Alexis, put this into context for us. Who are these people and how much did they each individually earn? So these are groups like Promontory Financial Group, Deloitte, uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers. These are consultants who were hired by the banks in spite of the fact that most of these consultants have done prior work for the banks and want to do future work for the banks. And so there's this conflict of interest, right? They don't want to make the banks look bad because they want to get future business from them. These consultants were paid on average $250 an hour, spent an average of $40 per foreclosure file. So they're looking at your foreclosure fiasco they're spending 40 hours on it, getting paid $250 an hour. They walk away with an average of $10,000. And if you're one of those homeowners who only got 300 or 500 bucks, you should know that one of these consultants who looked at your tale of tragedy is walking away with 10 grand. Well, and let's put into perspective, you did a pretty good job on your, your Tumblr page, how much these people <laughs> um, were actually, the, what they can actually buy with the money that they will be receiving, the majority of them anyway. Um, if we could go sure. ahead and, and bring up that graphic. First up, we have um, a storage facility. You can buy a storage facility for just about two months with that $300. Uh, next up is a tent. If you were one of the lucky people who actually received $5,000, then you can get this wonderful luxury tent. And right, who needs a house when you can buy a tent? Exactly. Right? You just need to worry about the place where you're actually going to plant that tent. And finally, right. uh, we have this, uh, these uh, pitchforks that you are so kind to put up. You can buy just about uh, 10 of those. Um, so is right. there any other examples that you can give us of things that you can buy? 
Uh, one thing was that uh, you could buy 300 boxes of Kleenex to dry your tears, and you could buy about one hour's worth of legal advice. Because as a result of getting this settlement, they don't give up their right to sue, so they could sue, but most of these people don't have any money left. And $500 isn't going to really give them enough money to pay a lawyer to sue to get some more money out of it. So, Alexis, let me ask you this. Is this case closed in this instance? I mean, obviously, there were things that were going on on the Hill today, but is this the maximum amount of money that these people are actually can earn? So Senator Elizabeth Warren, Senator Sherrod Brown pushed really hard for this. There's a lot of contention about how they arrived at this settlement. There's some question about how did you figure out what the right magic number was. I think probably the case is closed as far as the OCC is concerned, but we have a lot of people on the Hill like Representative Maxine Waters, Representative Elijah Cummings, who would like to push the OCC harder and say, is this the right number? Because one of the things I talked about in my report is the OCC told the media that the error rate per bank was about 4.2%, meaning in only about 4.2 percent of cases uh, were their errors and that was a lie they made that up this was something that they just pulled out of thin air that was something Senator Elizabeth Warren pushed really hard on in the hearing today and they will continue to push hard on and so I don't know if the case is closed or not but I certainly think that the OCC is trying to sweep this under the rug and it's up to us to make a bunch of noise about it absolutely Alexis Goldstein a former VP of Merrill Lynch and Deutsche Bank she's also a contributor to the nation thank you so much for giving us your insight thanks for having me